Never quit something with great long-term potential just because you can't deal with the stress of the moment, said Seth Godin in the book titled The Deep, the little book that teaches you when to quit. You know that feeling, the rush that overwhelms you when you've just launched a new business. You feel your world coming together and suddenly looking like they'll collapse. Because you have not only invested your time and effort into this new venture, you have also invested your money. Yes, it may not be much money, but the cash involved is worth crying for if all goes to hell. You see, like so many entrepreneurs out there, I know that feeling too. I have often had my gut swelling with fear when I've just launched a new business. I don't feel great every time I conduct seminars back in the university. Sometimes the hall were packed out. Other times, all we had were crickets. I never felt great when I launched a computer business center. I had hundreds of failures and a couple more discouragements, all strong enough to have held me back. And in the hall of fame of successful people in business, this is just the same. So, you don't have to let your fear slam you so hard now that you have or you are planning to launch your new business. Every entrepreneur feels this way at some point. How do you get over it? Number 1. You've started. More than 45% of human population think of business ideas every year. A middling 15% will attempt to start but never will. Only a tiny 5% will launch the business by the year's end. But you started. You launched your business. That's good news. It's a great start. And to the fact that you are a young person, everyone applauds a champion in the light. But few people ever consider the months and years of private, silent pieces of training in the dark. Since building a business is like having a new baby, you will have to decide to accept responsibility the instant you make such a decision. But you did. Responsibility requires guts and guts can be tough for fear-controlled people. You overcome your fear by launching your business. The good news is, soon as you launched your new business, you have set yourself up for the next step, which is Number 2. You will grow. Every baby is certain to grow. In the same way, your business is sure to grow too. But not only that, you will grow alongside. As your business starts, you'll begin a new experience as the owner of the business. You'll understand what it takes to manage your own business apart from working for someone. You will know all you can in one day about the business just as Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak both didn't know how Apple Incorporate would turn out. They only paid their dues by committing to the small company which began in a tiny garage. With each passing day you spend running your business, you'll watch your strength, your experience, your education as an entrepreneur grow. And since you're growing, your business will grow too. And if you're genuinely growing, the next point will happen to you. Number 3. You'll get there. When Microsoft launched business in 1975, it was in the heat of the neck-breaking competition. The Silicon Valley was packing out with Fortune 500 companies that could knock the teeth out of any small business. But out came Bill Gates and his partner Paul Allen. They started a business that would develop and sell basic interpreters for the Altair 8800. Soon, Microsoft rose to dominate the personal computer operating system market with MS-DOS in the mid-1980s followed by Microsoft Windows. They got there through thick and thin. It's the same with Apple Incorporate and Richard Branson's Virgin Airlines. It's the same with Walt Disney and the Ford Company. These all had their fair share of business hiccups, but they got through to the end. Your business is not just a part of you. It represents sometimes who you are and what you believe in. If you are steadfast in commitment and determined in your efforts, you will undoubtedly get there. And even if you don't. Number 4. It's a learning curve. Yes, all business experience failure at some point. You have to admit it and roll with it. It is said that if you never failed in business as an entrepreneur, you've not learned any lesson. 
Research in Motion Incorporate, makers of BlackBerry smartphone once sold out their company because the iPhone was killing their sale and consumers were losing affection for their product. Years later, the company came back stronger and better. Bigger companies have declared bankruptcy and they've gone on to build other smaller ventures. World-renowned British billionaire Richard Branson has experienced its first share of failure. His Virgin Airline branch in Nigeria folded up, losing millions of dollars in the process. Said Godin, in his book, The Deep, wrote, Winners quit fast, quit often, and quit without guilt. So, failure is never final. If your business fails today, you've only learned how not to do business. It takes humility to admit defeat and withdraw. Pride is what keeps us fighting when we are defeated. If you're quick to reflect on what you did wrong and how you can set it right in your next venture, there are greater lessons in failure than there are in success. Number 5. It's a game. Business is a game. You either win or lose. But you can increase your chances of winning by committing yourself to stay focused and persevere. And if you fail, well, it's a learning curve. Like I said earlier, you've not failed. You've only learned what doesn't work. So, dust yourself up and move on. You may not succeed the first time. You may not succeed the second time. You may not even succeed the third time. But look at yourself. You will have learned several ways in the process of your failures and how never to build your business. Those who are afraid to fail and so never risk anything are much more likely never to succeed compared to those who are never scared of failure. If you aren't afraid of failure, you are most certainly qualified to enter into the world of success. It may not be easy, but your resilience will carry you through. Business is a game. Plan to fail. Plan also. Fight to succeed. So yes, you should not stop launching businesses because one business failed. I read once that the entrepreneur has blood that's different from the average employee's blood. It's called bulldog blood. It's that point where you keep going on though you are hit on every side. It's having the same zeal as Thomas Edison who failed a thousand times before he got the electrical bulb right. It's being indifferent to mockery like Leonardo da Vinci as he made incomprehensible ventures in the world of art. It's being willing to compete in overly packed markets with a seemingly awkward idea like Henry Ford did with the Ford Motors. All those attributes may not make you a conventional and sane person in the end, though the world never makes way for the person who conforms. The world celebrates those who go against the status quo. That's what building a business is all about. You're going against what you would normally not want to do. And that, for you, should be a calming encouragement to keep going on. If this challenged you, subscribe to our channel. We love you.